Hey guys, so please excuse my dryer as it is drying clothing, but here we are. Hi, I wanted to record today because I honestly try to record. It's gonna bother me because it's crooked. Haha. Uh -huh. I honestly try to record anytime I feel passionate in that moment about what I'm about to talk about. Um, so. To be honest with you, I'm not super great on my own <laughs> um, at planning things out and organizing and trying to ensure that it's gonna come off a certain way. Um, I'm more of just a, a free thought, free flow kind of person. So with that being said, I really wanted to talk today about um, men and women as opposed to men versus women. Ah, um, now I'm not the kind of person who's gonna stand here and deny that biology exists. Um, I'm I love biology, so I can't do that. Um, <laughs> um, I understand that, you know, men are men and women are women. There are a lot of physiological differences. There are a lot of psychological differences in that and in being that. Um, there are a lot of men who feel more like women. There are a lot of women who act like men. There are men who were born men and should not have been born men. And there are women who were born women who should not have born more, been born women and relate more so with men, feel that, want that, need that, because that's what they are on the inside. So. With all of that being said, um, the whole idea and, and my topic of interest here that I want to kind of focus on, as I say, stated, hi, my cat is adorable. As I stated in the beginning was men and women as opposed to men versus women. And I think where we lie and where things stand right now is, is very complicated in that regard because each, each sex of the same species, mind you, I think we oftentimes, um, but my friend um, Brian says often that we, we forget that men and women are the same species. We talk about them as if they're different species um, and they're not, we're, we're human beings. So <laughs> um, with the, the history and the things that the way are, the way they are right now, excuse me, I think there's a lot of that male and masculine energy that has resentment towards and for that feminine energy and vice versa. So, and what I mean by masculine energy is is just that 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 male type of thought. Um, and I will do another video just because that's not what I'm I'm standing here for right now. Is that I will do another video all, focusing on masculine energy versus feminine energy. What that actually means it doesn't just mean the physiological body. Um, there's a lot of other things that go on into that as well internally and in the way that people experience the world. Um, so. What we see a lot of, and I talk a lot about um, stopping and taking taking space for yourself to make choices before before making them, and it's not to think, over, think about them too much or to overthink them. Um, it's more so just about finding where they're coming from and making sure that we're not overthinking ourselves into manipulative decisions or bad, you know, poor, I don't say bad, poor decisions for ourselves or for others um, that are based on our survivalist mentality, which I talked about in a, a previous video. Um, so what I see a lot of right now, the first topic that I'll, that I'll discuss here is, is sex work, for example. Um, and I am someone who goes back and forth on that. I delved into it a little bit on my own and in my own regard in a personal way for a very short period of time. I experienced it. I have the perspective of a sex worker uh, and I can say that it is something that I find very detrimental to trying to establish and find balance between male and mass and female energy, excuse me, that feminine and masculine energy. And what I'm say speaking of this Specifically, I'm talking about our manipulation of each other and how we're taking our primal instincts and, and the way that in the way that we almost are confused about and, and don't know how how to direct these and channel these energies of primal instinct and we're we're manipulating that through through using our, our own bodies. So, and what I'm trying to say with this is, um, I, 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 and I, please excuse me while I take a moment because it's a topic that I do not like discussing, um, specifically because I do not want to offend. I am a very firm believer in just judgment-free, safe space. We all do what we do. We all are making our best choices for ourselves in every moment, whatever that means to us. And that is okay. I fully support it. Like I said, I've done it. I've been there. It's okay. I'm not even saying I'm better now because I don't anymore. I'm just stating 
a perspective and how I think and feel about it based on what I have come to find in the world. Um, so, with, you know, moving forward from that, I, I hope that that's a disclaimer enough. And, and I have a lot of friends in the industry. And I, I don't, again, I don't want to offend. I just feel that this type of awareness is very, very necessary in, in healing our overall um, population. Um, it's just, if we're capitalizing on each other's emotional uh on intelligence that's not the right word excuse me that's crazy but um we're capitalizing on on the fact that we are animals and that we are primitive and that we have these feelings in us that we honestly just don't really know what to do with a lot of the time we're um and so when, when i worked in the industry i saw a lot of you know women who were very lost in course and had very low self-esteem and not a, a not a very good um and not a very good um, awareness of who they are and what and, and what they wanted out of life. And so it's very easy when you're functioning from that feeling in that state to 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 engage in these types of activities. Um, I don't want to say it's very easy. It still takes its toll, you know. Um, and then you see, you know, a lot of the people who are coming in or who are um, consuming this this product or this service. Um, who are all experiencing and feeling that same thing. Um, two sides of the same coin, one is the consumer and one is the provider of the service or whatever it might be. Um, feeling and experiencing a very similar, what is my purpose? Where, where, do, I, where do I belong here? Um, how do I set a boundary? How do I share my body with other people? Uh, what exactly does that mean to me and for me and, and, and where does it lie in terms of importance and, and whether, you know, what do I, what do I need? What do I want? Um, and because there's so much sexual nature within us because it's been in us forever. We've always, and, and we're actually, there are a lot of studies showing that we're evolving away from that now as time goes on. Um, a friend of mine, I'm not sure that I'm pronouncing this correctly, but a friend of mine, um, introduced me recently to the theory or the subject of neoteny. Um, and again, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it's basically harboring those infantile traits um, through adulthood, both, both physically and emotionally and mentally. And it's something that we're doing evolutionarily <laughs> to protect ourselves, um, A, from our massive reproduction and B, from thinking so, so much and separating ourselves from from, from this and who we are. Um, and in that, there's been a lot of more struggle and confusion. Um, and I think, yeah, there's a lot there's a lot of things coming up and when I think about this, such as um, different types of pornography, um, different types of whether it's like, you know, there's like those um, cartoon types things, animes and, and hentais. And there's a lot of studies showing that those are actually can be more beneficial um, than, than watching another human and because it, and no matter what it's yeah I don't like whenever I feel like I'm starting to speak for an entire population um I try to backtrack a little bit because I don't want to do that either I can't I can't do that um my video today the video and the men and women thing it's just I'm tired of people separating in that way whether it's race or gender or you know um I think we're all tired of that, duh, but you can't just make things go away um, for whatever reason, no matter how you know wrong they seem to be. Um, but I just see a lot, especially recently, there's a lot of like, fuck the patriarchy, excuse my language, um, and, my, and, my, and my sign language. Um, <laughs> and there's just a lot of, and that's okay, you know, I, I understand that frustration, but there's also a lot of, you know, you know, you know, I just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I think if we come so strongly, and I'm not trying to like defend men either or masculine energy uh, in itself, because I do believe that it's the fact that it has had such a stronghold over so much of our decision making in our business world and our financial world and um, over the past, you know, years that it has and, and the time that it took women to have any say or voice in that. Um, which also has a lot to do with education and, and, and opportunity in that way. Um, and unfortunately, men have been just educated more given that different type of opportunity where women are the ones who bear children. Um, it just, these things that all are, you know, 
considered so bad and so negative in the world always have that positive intent or that positive first, you know, um, reasoning and not not even to say positive, but at the very least neutral, where it wasn't intended to, to, to cause harm. Um, so when I hear women talking about all men in a certain way, men are this and men are that, and all men just want to sleep with you. And these, a lot of men have a lot of feelings that they do not know how to process. And I can speak for myself in saying that as a woman, I have always felt that way. I, I don't know how to process these things. I don't know how to share my body in a sexual way. I don't know how to present myself in, in a way that is, you know, um, now, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm a considerably, you know, um, I've, I've, I've experienced enough people being attracted to me um, to be able to differentiate now in my life uh, what, what genuine attraction is and when it's kind of derived from more of just a lack of understanding of what's happening inside chemically. Um, a lot of the times, you know, you see an attractive person and it's, you know, um, wow, it's just a chemical thing. It's just totally like, oh my gosh, I'm this or that. For whatever reason, there's different things attract people to different things. And, uh, we need to be able to talk about that. Um, I don't want to say we, but I know I knew, I know I do. Um, not that I have any weird attractions, but just that I've never known how to, I've never felt like I've had a safe or comfortable space to be able to speak openly on, um, a sexual preference or even just how I feel in general. Um, and I think a lot of us lack that. And in lacking that we end up degrading each other and blaming and resenting the other gender or sex for these things that really were also causing for ourselves um and that's I don't believe in the whole if you wear you know if I'm, if I'm wearing a short skirt I'm asking for it I don't I don't believe in that either you know I think that if you're dressing a provocative type of way with the pre-recognition that men tend to you know um just naturally sexualize the female body um then yeah you're going to deny that you're going to get that type of attention is 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 also just very selfish and very silly and it's it's giving women a type of power that is just as dangerous as when that masculine energy um first started to kind of take waves and, and push that feminine energy aside um which again no negative intention just a neutral this is the way of life and this is the order of things that kind of happened and now we're moving into do new and different things and topics like this are important to discuss because we are creating a new world and we're doing it together and we're doing it through these types of things and yeah so that's why i'm here talking about this today it just it came up last night um in conversation someone had posted i i, I guess you could say putting someone on blast i don't know that's the good that's the right term right um and uh, a video and, and a and a specific conversation that this that this sex worker had with um a I'm not sure if it was a client or just a friend I'm not I'm not I, I can't speak for that but um and I looked at this person's profile and upon you know within a few seconds of, of researching this person's profile it I found that this person was most definitely um a minor and so I immediately let the, the sex worker know, listen, this might even very well be a minor. We need to be careful legally. I'm looking out for you because I don't want anything to happen. Um, and she responded very well and she was super respectful and so nice about it, um, and which is really, really great. But my concern and my, and my and, and, and stating this, and um, obviously this is this is the the event that kind of brought up this, this um, topic for us here today. Um, and, and in the same concern that I say to her is that, you know, A, you, we never know, okay, who's on the other end of the computer or the phone or the, and, and you could talk to someone for, and most of us don't even, for the record, it's, if there's a lot of, um, it's been three minutes, but if you're willing to pay me for my service, then I'll absolutely send you photos of my body, um, my, my body, um, which is then in a digitalized image, which is not deletable. It, it is there for ever. Um, and we don't even know who it's actually going to. Um, and my point to this specific sex worker was that is also a minor at this point. And she actually stated that she also believes he has special needs. So I said, okay, um, 
that's also, you know, that's um, another, oh, here comes the kind, it's so cute. I wonder if I'll walk in front of it. Um, that's another thing that is, is concerning to me, both as an activist, as a, as, as a mother. Uh, I, I am very concerned about allowing my son on the internet. He's only seven years old and he could very well go on and say, hi, I'm 16. Yeah, what are you doing? I, I don't know. I don't think he will. He's a great kid, but we don't actually know. Um, and the internet, the internet's a very scary place. This is no secret. I'm not trying to scare anybody. Um, it's, it's just, this is what it is. It's a concern of mine. And, um, I see it happening a lot and I, it, I chalk it up as a manipulation almost. And, and it's an, not intentional, much like I said a few moments ago about things, not this, this, this idea of people and things being ill-intended is, is, is really confusing to me because I really believe we all want what's best for us. And yes, that sounds really selfish, but when you are on a planet and experiencing a life for zero to five or 10 or 60 or 80 years, be selfish. <laughs> Make some selfish choices. Um, I speak on the fact that we all have a lot of unhealing, and I think that a lot of these things come and derive from that. Um, I would like to know and hear some of my friends and, and other sex workers' um, points of views. Um, I, I, I'm not really open to uh, like an aggressive discussion in my commentary, but I am open to just if you would like to share your experience and and what you you know um, how you feel about what you're doing. I I want to hear that. I want to know that. Um, because I'm just concerned. I'm concerned for the well-being of our people. I'm concerned that we're subconsciously manipulating each other just to keep continuing to get ahead um, when we could very well work together and make that different. Um, and I believe these things are happening naturally and that to get too caught up and wrapped up in the, the, the negative hustle and bustle of what's going on is, is detrimental to our own mental health. But to become aware of it and to have recognition of it is, is really, really necessary. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, men in this fawning over women and this, and this kind of this desire, it's such a natural drive and men have been emotionally and mentally suppressed like no other. Um, so a lot of them don't even know not even how to, not even just how to express, but where that expression is coming from or any of it, um, because they were never given that opportunity or that ability or taught that, that notion of, 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 of that type of reflection and that type of safety to share themselves in that way. And thankfully I see an experience more and more um, as I grow and as I, the, I watch our collective grow, um, I experience less and less of that and a lot of um, men who are more in tune with their that feminine energy and wanting to understand you know why things work the way they do and what we you know what what is this feeling and where is it coming from and not just allowing their primitive instincts to drive them and letting that that subconscious thought of just do it do it do it this is hot this feels good this is hot this feels good um <laughs> excuse me I know I know um so to be able to, to, to step outside of that um, is really challenging. And I, again, I think that we're capitalizing on that and that we're creating a dangerous kind of thing here. Um, and any type of power is dangerous. And I think that, you know, this feminine energy is feeling like it's having a power over the masculine energy now and that we should, it is my belief that we should attempt to kind of try to rein that in um, and use it and transform it a little bit differently um, as opposed to, taking our bodies and saying, yeah, you know what? You're right. I am a sex object. How much you willing, you know? That's okay, whatever. Hey, dude, do you, man. If you are honestly, like truly, if you honestly are so okay with that and that works for you, okay, cool. But just please be aware of, you know, of, of, of these t points that I'm making because they come from a lot of, a lot of study and um, I wouldn't be sharing them if I didn't feel confident in the fact that it, they come from, uh, a point of view that will actually hopefully um help people's general mental well-being um because it's just obviously something to, that i'm concerned about and that i uh, think about all the time um but you know instead of instead of that 
being able to talk with these men um, and, and, and I don't want to say men, but talk with these people who are more driven by that masculine energy, who are more just kind of see it, do it, you know, oh man. Um, and just kind of find out where that's coming from and just, you know, do you, are you, is that just, is that what you want? Is that really what we want? Um, yeah. It's not, I know it's not what I want. I mean, like, and that's probably why it's so easy for me to talk like this. Cause it's just like, yeah, when I think about that, no, I, 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 I would hope for better, um, from just thought and feeling. I would hope that we are, we are, have better self-control and are better able to meet, meet our own needs and have other people meeting our needs in a way that we don't have to desperately reach out, um, and sacrifice other parts of ourselves to have those needs met, um. And I'm sorry if I am touching any sensitive pieces. It's honestly a hugely sensitive topic for me even. Um, and I just think it's important to talk about regardless. Um, yeah. So I, any thoughts, feelings, I'm super open to them. Please comment below. Um, again, please, please. I, I really, really, really do not judge. I cannot say that enough. It is okay we are all human beings and like we've always done sexual things for both for just pleasure and for reproduction it's not this taboo insane thing that i'm trying to like knock off i just think that there's a lot of transmission of energy and a lot of not a lot of thought going into um how we're using our bodies and our minds here and that's going to be a huge piece moving forward in our evolution and our collective ascension and um that we should just kind of attempt to be ready for. And that's, again, my personal belief and feeling. Um, yeah, and if you resonate with anything that I say, not just in this video, but ever, please reach out to me, whether it's through Amanda Minerva, my um, my website, uh, or whether it's through Devoted Essentials, um, which is, you know, D-E-N-H-C-C -C on Instagram, um, or Devoted Essentials, nh.com, you can contact me through there. Um, if you resonate with any of it, please reach out, you know, because you're not alone. And whether you like what you're doing and you just want to talk more about how to talk about why that should be okay, or you don't like what you're doing and you kind of resonate with what I, my feelings and you want to talk about that, cool. Either one, I'm open. I'm here for it because that's what I believe is necessary to move forward with that honesty, transparency, and just genuine compassion as a society. So, yeah. I love you all very much. That's all I'm going to say for today, which isn't even all everything that I wanted to, but I think it's long enough. Once I see the mark of like 22-ish minutes, I'm like, okay, that's probably good-ish. Um, 